Om Jnana Timirandasya Jnanam Jana Shalakya Chakshurun Militam Jena Tashme Shri Gurave Namaha Nama Shrishtam Manum Apisatri Putram Matrasharupam Rupam Tashyagrajamuru Purim Maturim Goshtavatim Radha Kundam Giri Boram Maho Radhika Madhavasham Rapto Yasha Pratita Gripaya Sri Gunam Tanatachmi Vancha Kalpataru Vyascha Kripa Sindhu Pyebata Pati Tanam Pava Nebhyo Vaishnavibhyanamonamaha Nikila Shruti Mole Radnamaladiti Nirajita Padapankajanta Haji Mukta Kulairupa Shamanam Paritashtam Harinam Samsayami Narapit Chirim Chirat Karunayabaturna Kalu Shamar Paitamun Natuch Balaras and Sabhakti Shim Hari Purita Sundara Duty Kadambas and Deepidam Sada Rida Kandarish Purato Vasitinandana Janulambita Bujo Kanakavadato Sankirtanai Kapitaro Kamalaya Takshun Vishwambaro Dvi Javaro Jugadharma Pal Ande Jagat Priyakaro Karunavataru Ladini Shakti Swarupaya Gauranga Suridayacha Vakta Shakti Pradhanaya Gadadharanamashtate E Krishna Karuna Sindhu Dina Vandhu Jagatpate Gopesha Kupika Kantara Tha Kantanamastate Radhe Vrindavana Dise Karunam Ritavahini Kripaya Nijapada Jadashan Mayam Pradiyatam Bhaktya Vihina Aparada Lakshaya Shiptas Chagamadi Tarangamadi Kripa maitvam shadanam prapanam vrinde maste chadanar vindam vrinde maste chadanar vindam Shila Gurudev ki jai Shri Man Mahaprabhu ki jai Shri Harinam Sankirtan ki jai Shri Gdiraj Maharaj ki jai Shri Shri Jagannath Baladev Suvadra ki jai Grantara Srimad Bhagavatan ki jai, Sri Brahma Stuti ki jai, Gaur Bhakta Vrind ki jai, Gaur Primanan Hari Hari Bho. So, good evening. To all of you, welcome. To those connected online as well. <clears throat> Thanks for your presence and sorry for the delay. We have some technical difficulties and here we are. So <clears throat> we are continuing today with our series of lectures on the prayers of Brahma, Sri Brahma Stuti. Today is meeting number 20 and we will be studying verse 18. Mm -hmm. But as usual, let's make a brief recap of what we saw two days ago, which was verse 17, where we were speaking that how the, out the outside and the inside of Krishna, in one sense, uh, is the same. Hmm. So Brahma is saying in that verse, verse 17, he said, just as his, this entire universe, including you, appear within your belly, so it is now manifested here externally in the same exact form. How could such things happen unless arranged by your Maya? So of course, when in this case, when Brahma is referring to, to Krishna, to, to your, in relation to your Maya, means your Yoga Maya in this case, which is creating this unique situation of simultaneous uh, referring to Yashoda, remember this verse is connected to what Yashoda saw in Krishna's mouth. He saw the whole universe, she saw herself there, she saw Krishna there, and she saw the universe outside of him as well. 
and again, our acharyas mentioned this possibility that, well, maybe one could say that the inside universe is a mere reflection of the outside universe. Hmm? But we could say, no, it's not possible because we gave some reasons. When you have a reflection, the reflected image, how, how it appears. Yeah, reverse, basically. Mm -hmm. no? Also, we say that a reflection is of a three-dimensional item is two-dimensional. Mm -hmm. But this was not the experience of Yashoda. She was seeing exactly three-dimensional in both cases, not reversed. Mm -hmm. As we said, only visible objects are reflected in a mirror, not aromas and, and touch and the other sense functions. But this was not the case. <laughs> and as we say, if you want to say that one was the reflection of the other, and Krishna was in between the two as the mirror. Generally, you don't see the mirror in the mirror. No. But in this case, just show us so the mirror Krishna, if you will, inside this the so-called reflection. So, so just show the thought in this moment. Maybe this is a dream, but then, then she realized no, it's not a dream because everything is normal, it's not like in a dream. It's maybe an illusion of the gods or something, but this is not the case because only me are perceiving is perceiving this, not everyone else. This my bewildered intelligence, maybe. But she realized, no, no, this is not the fact. Or maybe she concluded, maybe this is mystic Krishna's mystic power hmm? in her Batsalya psychology. No? She's he's blessed to do some extraordinary things by the grace of Narayan and so on. And that was the option. No? Of course, Krishna's mystic powers. In the eye of Jashoda, actually, for us, referred to his yoga maya potency or achintya shakti. Mm -hmm. And of course, with all this that Brahma is bringing, all these points, he tries to make the case, okay, so the inside universe, the, the universe that is inside of you is real. Uh, it's not a reflection. So everything ex exists inside of you. In that sense, you are like a mother, and you are like a womb, and everything is inside your womb, me included. So like a child inside the womb of the mother may kick sometime her mother, and the mother won't be offended by that. Similarly, you are my mother. Please do not be offended by my little kicking in the form of my mischief some minutes ago when I tried to kidnap your cops and friends and interrupt your picnic. <laughs> so basically, that was what the ultimate intention and implications of, in Brahma's verse. And today Brahma continues relating his own experience about Krishna's body. He went to Yashoda's experience for some verses. Now he's coming back to his own experience have had have some minutes ago. So we will go to today's verse for this, which is verse 18. We have it here in our whiteboard. So I'll share with you also in the screen here in two parts because it's a pretty long one. It's in it's in one meter or chanda called Sardula Bikriditam. Hmm? Sardula Bikriditam. So I will read it. Uh, how to how to do? I'll read it all all to, all in a row myself, and then if you want, we can try it line by line. I read the one line and you read it. But first I will read it myself so you can get accustomed to the uh, to the endings of the lines. Which okay, next time it would be good to separate each line. Okay. Because if not, it's different difficult for the ones reading to know where it's ending each one of the four lines. So let's do both one, two, three, four. But anyhow, you will follow me <laughs> somehow. It says like this. Adaiva Adaiva Tarite Shamkimma Manate Mayatma Darshitam Ekosi Pratamam Tato Brajasurit Vatsa Samastapi Tavantu Sichatur Bujasta Dakilai Sakam Mayopasitas Tavantiva Jagantya Busta Damitam Brahmadvayam Sishati. That's one of the different melodies to recite this meter, which is the same meter of the 
first verse of Sikchastakam or the Sad Goswami Astakam. So certain songs and verses are there. So I'll recite the first line. We will try our best. Advai Bhatwarite Syakim Mamanate Maya Twama Darshitam Advai Bhatwarite Syakim Mamanate Maya Twama Darshitam Eko Si Pratamam Tato Braja Suhri Vatsa Samastapi Eko Si Pratamam Tato Braja Suhri Vatsa Samastapi Tavanto Si Chatur Bujas Tadakilai Sakamayo Pasitas Tavanto si chatur bujas tadakilai Sakamayo pasitas Tavantye vajagantya bhus tadamitam Brahmadvayam sishyate Tavantye vajagantya bhus tadamitam Okay, very good. <laughs> so the English translation of the verse says like this. <clears throat> so Brahma is again referring to, speaking to Krishna saying, Have you not shown me today that apart from you, all this universe is just the work of Maya? At first you were alone and then... You became all of Vrindavan's calves and cowherd boys, your friends. Then all of a sudden, sorry, then all of them became four armed forms worshipped by everyone, including me. <clears throat> uh, later, you became exactly that many universes. And now all that remains is that one immeasurable non-dual Brahman. So, this is today's verse. We'll go a little bit first word by word as usual. And then we will go through the different explanations. So, the first expression says, Adya Eva. Hmm? Again, in, the, in, the, in how the words play out in the verse, they will appear differently because of Sandhi, Adya Eva. And when you put this word separate, Adya Eva. So, Adya Eva means on this very day, so with this Brahma showing, he will speak about something that happened that day, which is what happened some minutes ago, all the display that Brahma show seen. So, sorry. So Adhyayapa means on this very day, so he goes back again from just show the situation to his own case. Tvat rite, which means apart from you, asya means of this, referring universe, of this universe. Kim means weather, mama means to me, na means not, me means, no, me, no, what means, na, te, by you. Hmm? Mayatum means the basis is your maya. So this anadarshitam, shown. So he presents like some rhetorical question in the beginning, saying like, have, on this very day, you have you not shown me how Apart from you, all this universe is the work of Maya? Of course, implying, yes, indeed you did. Then second line says, Eka, which means alone. Asi, in this case, means are and you are. Pratamam. Hmm? So now Brahma starts to describe the sequence, what Brahma just saw. In the beginning, you alone. Pratamam. Pratamam means at first. At first, it was you alone. Tata means after that. Braja Surit Batsa, the cups and the friends of Braj, hmm? Samastaha, all. Hmm? So he expanded into all this. Hmm? Api means also, Tabantaha means of the same number. So all of these were there. Asi means you became. Chatubuja means 400 forms of Vishnu, Tat, after that. So after seeing cups and 
voice expanded, all of them became four armed forms. Akilai means by all, Sakamaya with me, Upashitaha, which were worshipped. So all these Vishnu forms that I saw were worshipped by everyone, including me. And I was seeing that. <laughs> so that's astonishing enough. Tavantieva, exactly that many, so proportionate to the numbers of boys and calves, there were forms of Vishnu and Jaganti universes. There were a corresponding number of universes for all these forms at the, at the same time. And if that's not enough, overwhelming enough, Abuhu, you became then, Tat means after that, Amitam, unlimited, Brahma, Advayam, Shishyati. Brahma means Brahman, the absolute. Advayam means non-dual, Shishyati means remains. So at the end, all that remained was you who are the non-dual Brahman. Of course, we will explain why Brahma is referring to Krishna as Brahman here. But basically to make the point, you are non-dual. Although you seem to expand in many different forms, all of them were you, non-dual. So again, Brahma is returning to his uh, epiphany of some minutes ago, sequence by sequence. So let's begin sharing what my Guru Maharaj is, has revealed in his Bhaktivedanta Bhava Nubad, which will be included in his forthcoming book, which basically replicates what the verses has just said, but it's never enough to repeat it again, so I'll read it. So Brahma is again speaking to Krishna and asking, have you not just shown me that both you, that both you yourself and everything within this creation are manifestations of your inconceivable potency, Mayatom. At first you appeared alone and then you manifested yourself as all of your calves and friends of Raja. Raja Surit Batsa. Then those calves and friends appeared as an equal number of four-handed Vishnu forms worshipped by all, including myself. And after that, you appeared as an equal number of universes. Finally, you reappeared in your original form, demonstrating that you yourself are the unmeasurable, non-dual, ultimate reality, Brahman. So this is Bhaktivedanta Bhavanubhad. <clears throat> Just to repound the post, reconfirm this astonishing view, revelation that Brahma just has seen. He goes part by part of all that he's seen. So Krishna, I mean, try, let's go for a minute to this situ situation that we described at the very beginning of our series, before the prayers, what happened in the Brahma Vimohan Lila. So Bra Krishna was one, and Brahma tried to kidnap the, the boys and the calves. He thought he did, but Krishna expanded in equal number of those unlimited boys and unlimited calves with exactly the same personal features of each of them on the specific earrings and hair, hair style and turban color, all, all the details externally and all the details internally, their psychology. You now with this showing how well he knew each of them. <laughs> so Brahma returned after a year, earthly year, and he expected to see Krishna dejected, uh, miserable suffering without his friends and cast for a year. Uh, try to imagine that would be too much for Krishna. So that was not joke what Brahma tried to do. <laughs> no. Imagine Krishna without his friends and cast for a whole year. It's almost like a, attempting to kill him. But it's another way of putting that. But Brahma was surprised, of course, instead to see that. I mean, see, he basically witnessed the exact same scene that he saw when he left. <laughs> no. Krishna was with his friend, the calves. And when he returned, Krishna was with his friends and the calves. So it seems like nothing happened in between. And he thought, but I kidnapped them all. Mm -hmm. But Krishna was with the boys and the calves grazing. It was like 
going back to the past, if you will, having like a deja vu of what happened a year before on Earth. And as we know, Brahma started to analyze the set of calves and boys, and he went back to the cave, the illusory cave that was there that he thought the real cows and boys, calves and boys were there. And he analyzed them. He went back. And he compared. And, and, it, and he could find no difference between the two. And in the beginning, as we know, he thought, maybe they are the same set and Krishna's running faster than me and taking them to one side. And to the, but then realized, no, this is not happening. So let's analyze the two of them. They're exactly the same. There is not any difference. Indeed, Brahma at one point thought, I cannot determine which is the original set. If one of the two are illusory, I don't know which is the one of the two because they are, look exactly the same. Like the worlds outside and inside of Krishna, when Jesuda was looking, it's like there is, they are equal. There are no reflection of one another. And as we know, at this point, Brahma's first head started to spin. <laughs> And to make his second head spin from each one of these calves and boys, 400 forms of vision start to appear. Mm -hmm. and, on, and, on, and not only that, but he saw all these Chatur Butch, Vishnu, Murtis worshipped by the time element, by yogi, the different yoga cities or mystic perfections personified where, where they're worshipping those forms. The different Buddhas or material tattvas or material elements personified were worshipping those forms. Many Brahmas were worshipping those forms. Brahma himself saw himself worshipping those forms. <laughs> Time personified. So at one point, the, the scene became so intense that Brahma had to close his eyes. Try to imagine. If you are looking at something that is so intense, in this case, regarding majesty, it was too much. So Brahma had to close his eight eyes. Huh? Although he was looking with two of them, but just in case he he's close, huh? he's he was witnessing the most extreme uh, show of expression of Aishvarya. I mean, we we will never find any greatest Aishvarya in the whole Vedic canon than what is shown in this Brahma Vimohan <laughs> And on top of that, as we know, Brahma closed his eyes, and when he opened his eyes. Krishna had wrapped up the whole display of majesty. And Krishna saw everything as normal. Brahma saw everything as normal, if you want to put it like that, which was Krishna looking for his friends with a morsel of food in his hand. So that's when Brahma fell, as we know, from the swan and started to offer this, this Brahma stuti. So the point is, Brahma is remembering all this here at this point. It's remembering all that happened a few minutes ago. But it's too intense to to stop remembering that. He's remembering that over and over and over again. And as we said, his insights about the nature of Krishna, the nature of Krishna's form are increasing one verse after another. He's showing us the way, how we should pray to Krishna. At every verse, some new insight is coming. So, anyhow, let's go to, to some of the all ancient commentaries on this verse, starting with Srila Sridhar Swami. Ancient, ancient venerated commentator and Mahaprabhu so much worshipped. So Sridhar Swami says, briefly, he said this referring to Krishna's, remember we are speaking here about Krishna's form hmm, that Brahma is seeing. And that form is medium size, but at the same time, it's all pervasive. Again, it seems contradictory how something that is medium size can be unlimited. If it's medium size, it's not unlimited. But Krishna is defying that logic. You know? And he has shown that, I mean, again, Brahma had just darshan of that principle some minutes ago. He thought this form is medium size, it's ordinary. And then Krishna say, look how ordinary I am. <laughs> Limited Narayans, and then again, so called medium sized form. So, Sridhar Swami says, This all pervasive medium sized form was also shown to me, Brahma is saying, through Sridhar Swami, in the same way, and not only to your mother. So, basically, with this, Brahma is bringing back the 
his presentation to his own case. No? Sometimes we, we try to make our own case <clears throat> and we will refer to some, how to say, we will refer to some uh, reference from someone else, basically, hmm? to some other authority, in this case, Yashoda. And that's pretty powerful authority you can refer to. If you want to, to invoke some authority in, in Raj, you, you invoke Yashoda's name. But Brahma is saying now, Okay, but now I will speak about my own experience. Hmm? So Brahma first, <clears throat> in some verses before, this was a few verses ago, Brahma established, if you want to put it like that, the achintya ness <laughs> of Krishna's form, the, uh, the inconceivable nature of Krishna's form, which seemed medium-sized, but which is unlimited at the same time. In the beginning of creation, he had some experience of that. He mentioned that in previous verses, even when he was in the lotus and looking for his source, going down the lotus stem, but not finding his source. More recently, then he went to Yashoda when he was looking into Krishna's mouth. And outside of Krishna's mouth, the universe was outside. The universe was inside. She was inside. Krishna was inside. But Krishna was outside. <laughs> mm. And here in this verse, Brahma is again returning to his own case, but now connected with the experience he had just a few minutes ago. Mm. Where through this apparently small, medium-sized, little Krishna, unlimited Narayans are coming in every direction. Mm. So he's, with this, he's trying to further pound this important theological post that the form of Krishna is defies all material logic. It's a chintya. Jan shama sundarama chinta guna sarupa. And this is what Brahma says in, in Brahma Samhita. And Krishna has inconceivable um, nature, inconceivable qualities, inconceivable form. Everything about him is a chintya. That's one of his names indeed. So a chintya doesn't mean you cannot understand that in any form, but you can only understand that if you approach that in a certain way. And Brahma is realizing this. As we said some class ago, Brahma is a big thinking person. He has four heads, so he thinks a lot. He has lots of thinking capacity, thinking in the four directions. So he's like the greatest intellectual of the universe. I mean, to be the architect of the whole multiverse, you have to be pretty smart. So he did that. But he realized to understand the form of Krishna, I have to put my four heads to the ground on, at his feet. And in this way, I will understand much more than trying to figure out for myself what this form is about. And that's why he has said in verses before, jnana prayasa jnana mantaiva. Instead of trying to thread the ascending process of trying to, by my own strength, understand the limited, I will put my head to the ground. I offer namaste, namaskar. And by that, I will get so much more knowledge. And if I try to raise my head, and try to figure out everything. As we know, at this point, Brahma Bimohan Lila means the four heads of Brahma are spin spinning like nothing. He's not being able to figure out what's going on. So basically, that's what Sridhar Swami mentions. So let's continue with Sanatana Goswami's commentary to this verse on his Brihad Vaishnav Toshani, his commentary on the Srimad Bhagavatam. So, as usual, some of our acharyas, they will present in between lines, no? Like Brahma will say one verse and Krishna will reply something in argument with that, no? Because remember, Krishna is full, full into his mukdata, in the words of Vishwanath Chakravarta. Mukdata means, how to say in English, like naivety, like this innocence, like Brahma is praying to him, you are the absolute, the source of everyone, and Krishna is like, what, what are you talking about? <laughs> I'm looking for my friends and calves. Why you say I'm so such a big guy? You are Brahma. You are a big guy. <laughs> I, I'm nobody. I'm a just an in, uncivilized village boy, medium size. I'm looking for my friends. <laughs> you are telling me that I'm the source of everything? What are you talking about? So Krishna kind of, with this, is turning Brahma's heart because Brahma wants to enter Vrindavan. He asked that to Krishna in the beginning of creation. He expressed... I like to have Sakya, I like to be your friend. So Krishna is saying, okay, I'll prepare the ground for that to happen eventually. 
So with this in between lines, Krishna is also churning Brahman's heart more and more. So, so Krishna might reply, Sanatan Goswami suggests here to Brahma, if everything in this world is illusory, then I am I too am illusory. So let's see what Brahma says now. Like Krishna is in this way, like creating some udipana, some stimulus for Brahma to go further into his. You know, like like what sometimes guru and disciple, you know, guru may ask something to the disciple, and the disciple will give the reply, and the guru would present some argument to that. All the disciple is correct in what he's saying. Like guru is, but no, no, because this and this. And the disciple is like, no, no, but this. The guru, no, no, but this could be. So in this way, he's further churning hmm, the level of realization. Hmm. So Brahma replies to this possibility that Krishna may say, well, you are saying that everything in this world is illusory. And Krishna says, and I'm here in this world, so probably I'm also illusory. I'm part of this Maya Shakti show. So I don't think I'm supernatural like you are proposing. <laughs> Krishna is saying like this. Brahma says, no. <laughs> in this verse, he's replying, no. Although you are included in the world, not because avatar, he's descending into the world. Today, I directly realized that you and those who belong to you are real. In other words, not the product of illusion. So, again, with this question, it's also like testing how much Brahma understood the lesson because some minutes ago, Brahma was thinking that. Some minutes ago, Brahma was thinking when he saw Krishna and his friends having the picnic. So, what's 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 this? And this seems like an ordinary group of boys just having fun. Um, every, the devas are celebrating like he's God. He doesn't seem to be God. I mean, they're just eating with the left hand and having fun for a while. They must be imposters or something. So Brahma himself was thinking, "This is Maya." So now Krishna is saying. So I'm here in this world. I'm an ordinary boy. I'm Maya. But Brahma now had conversion. You know, he had been converted in the last minutes. Try to imagine how intense this is. Let's five, ten minutes ago, Brahma was thinking, Krishna and his friends are a product of Maya, and this guy is an imposter. And after five minutes, he realized he's the source of Narayan. <laughs> so from thinking he's an imposter to understand he's the source of God, even. <laughs> Unlimited Narayans are coming from here. Wow. So Brahma is saying that here. You are in the, in the world. I, I, you are in front of me. You have descended here. But I, I today directly realized. Realized, not just. But I saw it. You and those who belong to you. Implying the ones who I've tried to kidnap. Your friends, your cops, your eternal associates. You are not under the jurisdiction of of the illusory energy. You are in an, under another department. You operate under another codes, other laws. <clears throat> so Brahma further replies according to Sanatana Goswami here in, in a rhetorical way, as we mentioned. Was the fact that the universe is Maya without you not fully shown to me by you on this very day? Indeed, it was shown. In other words, without you, Whatever you and you means you and your associates, because without your associate, you are not you. <laughs> so he's understanding. Separate from that, everything else in this world is Maya. But you and your associate, although you seem to be part of this world, although you seem to be ordinary people, I actually were thinking that five minutes ago. <laughs> now I'm understanding you are totally in another reality altogether. So today I've realized that Brahm is saying. Mm -hmm. So he makes this important point also. He's realizing not only Krishna is transcendental, but your associates as well. So he's realizing the principle of, of Swarup Shakti personified, the personifications of Krishna's internal potency, the Gopas, the Gopis, the Kaps, and so on. Mm -hmm. So and remember, these Kaps and friends were Krishna. Because we're expansions of Krishna, the ones that Brahma saw some minutes ago. Also, that's another point. So everything that you became was unlimited, Brahma is realizing. At the beginning, I thought, you are ordinary, your friends are ordinary, your cops are ordinary. And after a few minutes, he saw Narayans coming from 
every calf and every friend. Mm -hmm. So you thought this is ordinary? See, mm -hmm. huh? one God per calf, one God per Gopa, and one Brahma worshiping that God mm -hmm. in each one of them. And Brahma seeing himself mm -hmm. worshiping Narayan. And, mm -hmm. so, so basically he's making this point. All of these calves and, and, and friends who were Krishna's expansion seem so differentiated I understand that all of them were you. Now remember, these are the expansions of Krishna. These are not the actual calves and boys who are Krishna's associates, but are Krishna's expansions that were there for a whole year. Hmm. So actually, they were of great variety. They were actually one. Hmm. That's why he uses the word advayam, hmm. which means non-dual. Hmm. Everything was ultimately you. Ad Rama advayam shishyati. What remains is the, in, how is this in English, indivisible, indivis, indivisible Brahman, hmm? the non-dual. So he's referring to Krishna as Brahman here. Of course, when, when saying Brahman, it's not that Brahma is, Brahma is promoting Advaita Vedanta or, or, or um, radical non-duality as Shankaracharya will do. But basically, he's referring to Krishna as Brahman because it's a name of, Brahman means the absolute is a way of referring not necessarily to the undifferentiated effulgence of Bhagavan, but just as the absolute. Brahman also means great, all pervasive, and that's what Brahma just saw a few minutes ago. <laughs> and even in the previous chapter, chapter 13, Sukadev Goswami refers back to, to Krishna as Brahman, interestingly. When, when he was with Sukadev Goswami in the previous chapter, was describing what Brahma was seeing and Krishna expanding and expanding and then Krishna wrapping up all that manifestation and remaining himself looking for his friends and calves. Hmm? Then Sukadev Goswami refers to Krishna as Brahman in that verse of the Bhat and 13 chapters, verse 61. And he, and he uses exactly the two same words, Brahma Dvayam. Advayam is non-dual and Brahma means the great, the absolute. Referring to, even though he appeared as multifaceted friends and calves, expansions, all of them wrapped up and became and, and remain in that one non-dual substance entity called mm -hmm, Krishna. Mm -hmm. And Brahma himself will make this clear at the end of the Brahma Stuti. One famous prayer, Ahoba Gyam, Ahoba Gyam, Nanda Gopa, Brajokasham, Yan Mitram, Paramanandam, Purna Brahman, Sanatanam. So he will refer to Krishna as Purna Brahma. You are not only Brahma, but the, the full Brahma, the fullness of Brahma, the fullness of the Absolute. Mm -hmm. So again, Brahman means all pervasive. And, and that's the experience of, Bra of Brahma. Try to keep in mind the two words, please. Brahman and Brahma. So Brahma, some minutes ago, he saw Krishna's all pervasiveness. Appearing from one, this little medium-sized form, unlimited Narayans, and returning to him. And he remains localized there hmm? <clears throat> so that's why brahman is used here just not to be confused because sometimes we may be accustomed every time brahman is used refers to the impersonal aspect of the absolute not necessarily not necessarily hmm. let's continue with jiva goswami's commentary there will be a mixture of what he's saying in the lago vaishnav toshni his commentary in the bhagavatam and the, in the bhagavat sandarbha Anucheda 36. So he paraphrases Brahma saying, let us forget Yashoda's realization. Let us speak of today. No. Again, because for two verses, they were speaking about what Yashoda saw. And Brahma said, okay, let's go back to, to the facts. Five minutes ago, what happened here to me directly. <laughs> so with that idea in mind is that Brahma is speaking. He's bringing back the case to whatever he experienced. So Brahma is saying, according to Jiva Goswami, mm -hmm. some repetition is here and what other commentators say, but it's important to repeat. Again, comes the rhetorical question. Did you not show me today that everything in this universe, excluding yourself, everything outside of you is of the nature of Maya, mm -hmm. meaning that it is perceived only through the potency of Maya? Of course you did. In other words, 
Due to Maya, the universe appears to bewildered people as existing only outside of you, as you appear in this human form. In other words, Brahma had the realization, actually the universe is not outside of Krishna, but everything is inside of him. Although he appears inside the universe, which again, then we enter into this divine paradox. Brahma realized everything is inside of Krishna, but Krishna is inside the universe. But the universe is inside of Krishna. <laughs> and, the, and, and to perceive that separately, the universe and Krishna as, as, as something different, that's through the effect of Maya, basically. <clears throat> and Krishna will ask to Brahma after saying this, according to Jiva Goswami. Krishna asked Brahma, again, in Brajabhav, how did I show you all this when I am in the human form? Because you, Brahma, are saying like all universes are inside of me, but I'm a human. I'm a boy. How did I show all this stuff to you? So Brahma answers in this verse. No? At first, and he starts to enumerate. At first, in Brahma, Bimohan Lila, you were one. You were yourself looking for your friends and calves. Then the various forms of cowherd friends and calves appear from this one form. Then again, they disappear into that very same form, which is all that remains. Mm -hmm. This means that this form is Advai Brahma, or the non-dual absolute reality. So again, a multifaceted variety came, but again merged into that only person, implying there is no duality in you. So if Krishna is Advai Brahma or Advai Gyan, non-dual consciousness, non-dual reality, it means he can only be understood by non-dual People, if you will, <laughs> to put it in brief words. No. We have to enter non-dual thinking for perceiving the non-dual absolute. You cannot just access non-dualism through dualism. And of course, dualism is the norm in this world, generally. To be under the influence of Maya Shakti means dualistic thinking, dualistic mind. Us and them. Black and white, good and bad, I like, I dislike, all this type of like amputated things, no? Like we are not seeing everything with a common center, but this here and this there, and we are not able yet to to conceptualize reality in harmony no? with a common center. No? And as we, we were speaking the other day, I think about that, right? Like non-dualistic thinking. And, and for us, chanting the mantra basically means that. You know? Many times we hear the word mantra means uh, that which helps to liberate the mind. So what's the implications of liberating the mind? The, the idea is generally the mind exists mostly in dualistic perception. So... You have to free the mind, means free the mind from that dualistic perception and enter into the realm of non-dualism. And I will say that all, most of us may have had some glimpse of what's what happens when you are able to access non-dual perception. You get a glimpse of non-dual reality. Because that non-dual non -dual reality is eternally existent and present there. The fact that we do not experience that is just because we are remaining in dualistic mindset. So chanting the mantra has to do with getting rid of this dual thinking, getting rid of thoughts, which is not so easy. <laughs> we are so attached to thinking about everything, thinking about thinking, <laughs> or thinking about, if you are chanting, you are thinking about chanting, or thinking about not thinking about chanting, <laughs> uh, but still you're thinking, <laughs> and, and, and somehow you you pull yourself down to the dualistic mindset. Yeah, no? and that's why sometimes many of our acharyas will say when you are chanting, and the, sometimes someone asks one sila Prabhupada, so what I should think when I'm chanting? Yeah. He'll say, give your mind a rest for a moment. Stop thinking, and we we are like. How to do how to do that? Is that possible? I mean, it's non-stop machine. <laughs> Try to hear the sound of the mantra. Try to hear the mantra. No need to think. No need to filter the experience through the. No? Although for us will be like, oh, that will be higher if I think about what I'm. No, no. 
I will take the situation lower. Try to just let the mantra speak for itself, if you will, and hear that narrative, that revelation. And of course, it sounds easy. When you try, you will see that thinking, 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 thinking. <laughs> so many thoughts I have to. <laughs> so then comes the whole sadhana, the whole work, the whole battle, if you will, the whole Kurukshetra. <laughs> And again, I don't, I mean, that's another, it's connected, but the point is we are speaking here about Adway, Adway, so non-duality. Of course, it's easier said than done, but it's important to understand that how how we have to access, how we can access non-duality. Hmm? <clears throat> so the point is that Brahma here, going back to Brahma's epiphany, revelation, hmm? Brahma witnessed the appearance the, the existence and the disappearance mm, of unlimited spiritual and material substances coming all from Krishna and then retiring all in Krishna in that single form. Mm. So that meets, meets the criterion of non-dual Brahman. Mm. The absolute is non-dual. All variety comes from him, sustains, returns to him. It's, it's not disconnected from that source. Mm. So th those are the characteristics of Brahman. Brahman means all pervasive, and again, Krishna's all pervasive. Although you see a picture, doesn't seem all pervasive because I mean, how can you do a picture that is all pervasive? You, you have to frame it. <laughs> no. All pervasive means no, no frame is enough. I kind of never like end the picture. <laughs> so it seems non-pervasive, but it's all pervasive. Hmm. In this connection, in, in his Brihat. Krama Sandarva, which is yet another commentary on the Bhagavatam that Jiva Goswami wrote. He wrote like three commentaries on the Bhagavatam with one he was not enough. <laughs> like once I remember from Sila Prabhupada, my guru asked quotes, he wrote a commentary on the Gita and one devotee asked him, so which is your next next book you plan to publish or to command on? He said, I think I, I can write, I, I, I may write a commentary on the Gita and the devotees were like, but you already wrote a commentary on the Gita. Oh, and Prabhupada kind of chuckled. Like, and there's no end to how many commentaries you can write. And there's no limit. And Jiva Goswami makes it proof. He wrote like three commentaries on the Bhagavatam. And he could. And every other book he wrote was also like a commentary on the Bhagavatam. Sandarva, Gopal, Shampu. But he had officially other commentaries on the Bhagavatam. <laughs> We had Krama Sandarva, Lagu Vaishnav Toshani. So, like showing, no, there's no end to this. Vivata Bhagavatam Rasa Malaya. You can drink this juice forever. So he says, Sri Lajiva Goswami says that this verse is mentioned, today's verse, following the logic of Nahi Satyasya Nanatam. This is one verse from the 12th canto of the Bhagavatam, which means the ultimate reality is not manifold. So this is one of the two sides of the coin of Achintya Veda Ved. Our metaphysics is the reality is simultaneously one and different. It's non-dual, absolute, but it has different shaktis, different energies, and those energies create variety. But that variety is tied to that unique common source. So there's unity in diversity. So we should be concerned about establishing both things. Not only there is diversity, but also there is unity. As we say always, if there's only unity and there's no variety, it's boring. No, everything is the same. Everything thinks the same, feels the same. You start to become nervous. I imagine if we are here and I feel we agree on everything. We think all the same say the same, feel the same. It's like you start to go crazy. <laughs> Please, a little bit of variety here. Bring some conflict here. <laughs> it's too boring. But of course, if we do not agree on anything and it's only diversity, only variety, that's too, too much also. We need some unity. So we need unity and we need diversity. So in this particular case, the Abed, the non-difference, the non-dual, the, the unity side of the equation is emphasized. Mm -hmm. And of course, in the Bhagavatam, this is very much emphasized. Mm -hmm. But Antitattva Abhidas, 
तत्वम जग ज्ञान नाथ बायम ब्रमेति परमात्मेति भगवान इति शब्द यते फेमस वर्स ऑफ द भागवतम चुला जीव गोस्वामी लावर इट्स अ लॉट ऑन दिस ऑन दिस ऑन दिस वर्स बेसिकली सेज रियलिटी इज नॉट नॉन डुअल इट्स अ नॉन डुअल इट्स नॉन डुअल कॉन्शियसनेस बेसिकली ही सेज अद्वैत ज्ञान तत्व रियलिटी इज नॉन डुअल कॉन्शियसनेस but it's known as brahman paramatma bhagavan according to the level of approach mm -hmm. so the idea is relative non dual there is variety but at the same time there is krishna can become many, many as he just did to in front of brahma but remain one at the same time mm -hmm. that's why he's advai brahma is non dual substance mm -hmm. and brahma is i mean he's pretty much an authority Mm, or as Brahma is considered mm, as highest authority in Veda, in Vedanta. Sometimes he's called Veda Karpa, Brahma, which means like the womb of the Vedas, mm, from whom the Vedas are coming. Mm, mm, or, or, or he who contains the Vedic knowledge in his own inner being. So the point, if he reached this conclusion, he has seen that. Mm, that's a fact. He personally witnessed all the attributes of Brahman in the body of in the body of krishna basically brahma is all pervasive is unlimited no begin no end he saw that in krishna's body which seems limited which seems small which seems ordinary which seems village like <laughs> but actually is brahman but in engaging in lila that's how we conceive krishna is brahman is part of brahman as we will see but he doesn't look like brahman <laughs> he he looks like little boy <laughs> so it's important for us to establish this foundation yeah he looks like a little boy but actually he's the highest form of the abs non dual absolute so brahma is laying that foundation over and over again with these verses so nobody misunderstands misreads krishna lila because it's easily mis misunderstandable well, you can really go jump into krishna lila and think I, mean, i can do that i can go to the countryside and and do all that stuff that he's doing there <laughs> with my village people with my neighbors and so you need to understand <laughs> what's actually taking place there mm -hmm. so again krishna is brahman and brahman is all pervading therefore krishna is all pervading mm -hmm. in his personal form again he has a form but that form is not limited although our experience is that forms are limited our forms are limited i cannot extend my form my form is not unlimited the presence of my atma is limited to this form i'm not present in your body and in your body but again that's our form <laughs> a limited one but the form of bhagavan is totally another reality altogether vedanta sutra confirms this as well which says like the form of of, of the lord always separated by space does not undergo any change whatsoever because he simultaneously exists everywhere so krishna appears localized brahma's having this experience okay you are in front of me but a few minutes ago i saw all the universe is coming from you so if all the universes are coming from you it means this universe is coming from you so although you seem to be in the universe one minute ago i saw the universe in you and not only this one and all of the other ones as well and i saw myself inside of you <laughs> and again we have to think about that as much as we can as we say the other day until our head starts to pour smoke here <laughs> and it's showing collapse no, stop thinking please you have reached the limit of, of this function we have to reach this place some in some different way <clears throat> Let's go back to some words of Jiva Goswami in his Lago Vaishnav Toshani before reaching the end today with some expressions of the verse so we can justify also the nice writing here in the whiteboard. <laughs> so you have one expression here which is Twadrite in the very beginning, the second and third word, Twadrite, which means other than you. So in this verse, Jiva Goswami says, the expression twadrite or other than you means that everything except for bhagavan is maya in this world basically what we perceive another way of saying that is if 
if when you look at this world, somehow you do not perceive Bhagavan, you are in Maya. <laughs> what makes you see the world and not see Bhagavan is the influence of Maya. And the influence of Maya is, we call it, the result of that influence is illusion. So you are seeing something as it is not. Srila so Prabhupada has Bhagavad Gita Cities. And we have the world as it is not. <laughs> which means I look at the world, but I do not see Krishna. I do not see the source. I do not see the master, the background, the all-pervasive aspect of divinity, if you will. Hmm? So that's Maya. Hmm? To not see Krishna, basically, is, means Maya is doing, is, his, her, her influence is on us, basically. Hmm? And generally, what, when, when we say that means we are not seeing Krishna, we are not seeing the center, but we are seeing ourselves at the center, interestingly. I mean, sadly. <laughs> mm. Because generally someone someone is the center. So if Krishna is misplaced, according to our vision, of course, he's never misplaced. No. If we think he's misplaced, we are out of place ourselves. <laughs> and we think we are the center. That means you are out of place. Center is not your place. No matter how much you think you are the center, is, you are not the center, you cannot. So that means Maya, like to believe the impossible and to insist on that, to have hope after trying unlimited lifetimes, unlimited times in this lifetime. It's not working for you and it's not working for any other person in the history of humanity till today. But somehow still there is some lack of hope that next time it would work. <laughs> And we continue endeavoring in that direction. Yeah. This time will work. Not only you, but so many other people are thinking that same way. <laughs> so technically speaking, that's a good definition of madness. But you know, anyhow, we call it Maya. <laughs> to not be so in your face. So <laughs> twat mm -hmm. And Jeeva Goswami, they say the word twat, which means you, in, in this phrase, other than you, hmm, also implies other than you, also includes here the cows, the cowherd boys, and Vrindavan, which are parts of Krishna's internal energy. So here he is referring, Rama is referring, or Jiva Goswami, not to the expansions of Krishna as the cowherd boys and the calves, but as the cowherd boys and the calves that Brahma tried to kidnap. He's saying they are they are not part of, I mean, other than you, this is Maya, but other than you, your, your friends, your calves, your Brindavan, all that, all those things enter into the category of you. No, like, may, again, as we said, if I take out Brindavan, how much Krishna is you, Krishna? No? <laughs> That's what the gopis will say to Krishna in Kurukshetra. No? When Krishna is in Kurukshetra, I say, well, we can reunite again. And the gopis say, well, where is Brindavan? Where are the cows? Where are you? That's the point. You are not, if Brindavan is not here, you are not here. Because you without Brindavan is not you. You are Braja Krishna. You're not Dwarakesh Krishna, Maturesh Krishna, Kurukshetra Krishna. That's another Krishna. <laughs> we are interested in, in you. And you cannot exist without Brindavan, Gopis, Gopas, with, with the whole playground, with the whole paraphernalia. So this is an important point that Brahma is realizing, the importance of the associates of Bhagavan, the Swarup Shakti, and how Bhagavan is one with that, how much his identity is tied with the love that he's... Basically, how the form of Krishna is a result of the love he's receiving from his devotees. And he adopts a particular form according to the love he's receiving, basically, which is a very unique, interesting idea. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So this, is, this was Brahma's unique experience. All these are insects that are coming in Brahma's heart at this precise moment, one verse after the other. You know? There is a special oneness between Krishna and his Swarup Shakti. Of course, Maya Shakti is also one energy of Krishna, but somehow Krishna is never entering in direct contact with Maya Shakti. But with Swarup Shakti, oh, he's entering to so much direct contact, basically. Hmm? <clears throat> and apart from those things that exist, apart from Krishna and the sort of Shakti, we have the word Asya. 
if here it comes with the abbreviations, yeah. So Asya means of this world, basically referring to apart from you, braja, cows, and calves, your retinue, Swarup Shakti, Asya, this world, Maya Shakti. So Jiva Goswami quotes very many verses from the from the Bhagavatam. When he's referring, for example, when <clears throat> When Krishna expanded that as the boys and the calves, and this at the same time showed the Shatur Butch, the four armed Vishnu forms, and they were worshipped, these forms, by Brahma, time elements, the devas. He's saying, all those, all that people, Asya, they are part of the material world, the time element, the devas, Brahma, myself. So Brahma is having this clear definition. On one side, you have these personalities under the influence of Maya Shakti, Brahma, Devas, and so on, the <coughs> universe, material elements. And on another side, you have Brindavan, your associates, which seem to be part of the material universe, which seem to be, to the untrained eye, seem to be ordinary fellows, but which belong to a different category altogether. <coughs> and then Brahma says, Sakamaya. I don't know where you can find that in the verse here. No? So Sakamaya, which means, again, Brahma is referring to his vision. Sakamaya means including myself. So the point is that when Brahma saw these unlimited Narayan forms coming from one Krishna that were worshipped uh, by different elements, Brahma himself were, was worshipping. So he says, Sakan Maya. I, I was seeing this vision in which so many personalities were worshipping all these forms. And me myself was included in that vision, worshipping those forms. Hmm. So, uh, and, 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 and many universes were there. <clears throat> so the point is that Bhagavan was worshipping the same universe that where Brahma was living. Hmm. In other words, the, the, the universe in which Brahma is existing exists also inside of Krishna because that appeared from him, basically. In other words, Brahma is implying everything is pervaded by you. No? Your body is present everywhere. Everything is coming from that. Nothing exists outside of you. I do not exist outside of you. And again, the, <clears throat> the practical implication of that, as we said before, is that Brahma implies... Nothing exists outside of you. So in one way, everything is inside your womb. You are like a mother. Everything is inside the womb. And I'm like a child inside your womb. And as we say before, in almost every verse, Brahma is invoking this idea. A child will be in the womb of the mother. <laughs> Sometimes the baby will be kicking the womb of the mother. But the mother won't take offense. The mother will be happy like, Oh, my baby is, is alive. Well, that will she will be happy to. Okay, this is symptoms of everything is going on well. So Brahma is saying the same way. I was inside. I'm inside your womb. And some minutes ago, I did a little bit mischief. I tried to kidnap your friends and cut. It was like some kicking inside your womb. So you are my like my mother, because Krishna is Brahma's mother and father. Brahma didn't have normal uh, labor experience <laughs> no. so you are like my mother and i did some kicking in your womb you won't don't take offense please forgive me for whatever offense i've, I've done basically hmm? and basically he ends up describing again what he saw hmm? all this sequence of events krishna was by himself then he expanded the friends and the calves then the narayan forms all of this wrapped up and krishna alone remained like the undivisible brahman so Brahma is realizing all these different levels of display that I've just seen some minutes ago, all of them are you alone. There's, there's non-duality in all that I saw. I saw so much diversity, and all the diversity has at its root non-duality. You are Brahman, the non-dual, perfect Brahman. Indeed, Brahma comes to this insight. This surpasses mere Brahman. Because you're going to speak of Brahman, but you are Brahman in a very special way. But generally, Brahman is non-dual, but all-pervasive. That's all. But 
you have exhibited such an incredible, gave me such an incredible darshan. So, so your your Brahmanness, if you will, is, is unique. Brahma Dvayam Shishyati. So Brahma Dvayam Shishyati means only this non-dual Brahman remain at the end. So the famous Brahman that the Shastra is describing on some level can be compared, but actually cannot be compared to the Brahman that is standing in front of me, Brahman is saying. He's speaking to Krishna. You are that same Brahman that Shastra is speaking about, but you are not that same Brahman. You are Brahman 2.0, as they say. No. <laughs> no, upgraded version of it. Para Brahman. He will say that, as we mentioned in a few verses. Aho bhagyam, aho bhagyam, nanda gopa prayogasam. Yan mitram paramanandam, purna brahma sanatan. You are purna brahma. Yeah, we know Brahma, but you are Purna Brahma. You are the absolute in its fullest expression, executing Leela, interacting lovingly with your Swarup Shakti and so on. <clears throat> Let's conclude our explanation of this verse by referring to Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur's commentary, Sarartha Darshini, which is always very, very interesting. And then we will conclude here. So I'll read. He says, it's kind of a summary of everything we have seen today. So it's also good to make some overall wrapping up. So he says, Brahma continues. He paraphrases Brahma. <clears throat> the, un the universe you displayed within your belly and the universe displayed outside that you showed to your mother, going to the Yashoda's example, and all the unlimited universes passing in and out of the pores of your Mahavishnu form are produced by your material energy and therefore are designated as Maika. This I have already understood. But today I have realized the existence of thousands upon thousands of spiritual universes, not only the material ones, but spiritual ones, formed through your unconceivably powerful Swarup Shakti. There's no, there's not one object that exists independent of you in the thousands of universes that you have shown today, for everything is emanating from you. Oh Krishna, today you have shown me that both you yourself and everything within, within this creation <clears throat> are manifestations of your inconceivable potency, Achinta Shakti. First you appeared alone. And then by your Swarup Shakti, you expanded as all the cowherd boys and calves of Raj. Next, by Yoga Maya, you, cover, you covered all the cowherd boys and calves and revealed countless four-handed Vishnu forms composed of your Swarup Shakti. All these Vishnu Murtis were being worshipped by all conscious entities from the blades of grass to all the Brahmas. After that, you appeared as an equal number of complete universes. Then, by your desire, Yoga Maya covered all this and revealed the one form of the pure, perfect Brahman with immeasurable, incomparable beauty. Which, of course, is Krishna. Oh, you never hear that Brahma is beautiful. Brahman is beautiful. Because Brahman generally is nirgun, has no qualities. But Krishna is the beautiful Brahman. <laughs> and Brahma concludes through Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur. Now, because of my good fortune, Yogamaya does not cover this from my eyes. Brahma Shishyate, which means only you remain. Your form as the ultimate expression of Brahman remains and is not further transformed into something else. So Brahma is concluding like this, no? First you appear like this, they, then you expand it like this, you show this, you show that. Mm. And finally, this unique, charming, beautiful form remains. Unfortunately, and, and fortunately, <laughs> Yoga Maya is not taking this vision out and, and creating something else, but only you remain as the most charming form of the of, of non-dual absolute in the form of Sri Krishna. Mm. So again, this, this is a very important section of the Bhagavatam which somehow shows how Krishna is the source of everything, both materially speaking, spiritually speaking. So 
Krishna himself is saying that in the Gita, in the first of the four chatur shloki, four verses that summarize the whole book. Aham sarvasya prabhavo matha sarvam pravartate ti matva bhajantimam buddha bhava samambita. Krishna says, Aham sarvasya prabhavo. He says, everything comes from me. So it's not an exaggeration. I mean, if, if we as Gaudias play out the implications of that line, it means everything comes from me. If Krishna says that, it means that even Narayan comes from Krishna. This the full the full expression of that line of the Gita is playing out here in the Brahma Bimohan Lila. Because Krishna the Gita says, Everything comes from me. And we may think in a more general way, yes. But in the Brahma Vimokan Lila, unlimited Narayans are coming from Krishna. So to that point, this line applies. Everything comes from me, including God. <laughs> God comes from Krishna. Krishna is not God. Krishna is something more than God. Narayan is God. Vishnu is God. Krishna is Krishna. <laughs> Krishna is God beyond God. Of course, he's God. But at the same time, he's more than that. <laughs> That's a unique Gaudiya psychology. No? Like Srila Prabhupada will say, no? people generally teach us that God is the most worshipable object, but we teach who is the most worshipable object of God. So there's something about God. <laughs> and of course, Krishna is that something. You know? it's God, when he's in love with his devotees, and that's a high good thing for him and so on. So anyhow, some words I want to share today. In the next verse tomorrow, verse number, which verse? Number 19. Till, till verse 22, we are in a certain sections of these prayers. But Brahma will continue analyzing this like sacred wonder of Krishna's medium-sized, all-pervasive, charming form of this non-dual Brahman in his most captivating presentation. So... I don't know if any has any questions, something you may like to to ask about, to share. Well, what can you that did you mention that Brahma thought that on the one hand he went too far, right? With this whole arrangement. On the other hand, you know, and you, you mentioned the word mischief, so <clears throat> doesn't it look a little bit that Brahma somehow qualified himself for Sakurati, you know, with his mischievous mind? That you know, look, he acted as a, <laughs> a kind of uh, cowherd boy, but uh, not yet a cowherd boy, but uh, his kind uh, of character, and he's normally sober <clears throat> person and so on, but he did something a bit crazy. You know? <laughs> uh, yeah, yeah, in, in one part of of the commentary, I think to I don't remember exactly to which verse, but one which one to what verse of this section, I don't remember which commentator, but they were paraphrasing Brahma. That Brahma will say, In the beginning of creation, he will say to Krishna, When I was in the lotus trying to look for you, you didn't appear, and then you appeared because Krishna revealed, and then you disappeared. And I tried to for you for you to appear, but you didn't appear. So it seemed like you were playing hide and seek with me. <laughs> no? And then <laughs> which is very much in connection with Sakya Rasa, which is what Brahma wants to say. So maybe he started to get some Sakya some scars, but that hide and hide and seek in the beginning of creation. <laughs> and then he goes to Vrindavan, uh, as we know, and he sees all this Sakya Rasa environment, which somehow includes hide and seek of another type. <laughs> and Brahma tried himself to do some hide and seek, but it didn't work for sure. So he realized, I. I like to do that, but still, I'm, it seems I don't have the Adhikar to engage in, in that language, but I would like to. So, yeah, somehow we can connect this <laughs> this mischief to, to, to part of his aspiration, if you will, which is, is not yet a fully accomplished, expressed in a fully accomplished way, but he's, he has tried his best and he's, he's getting more and more upgraded in that connection. Yeah. <laughs> oh, yeah. <clears throat> what else? Any other question? We have time for both, no problem. Um, if, if our form is limited, our physical form now, 
and the form of Bhagavan is unlimited, mm. then how about the Siddha Deha? Mm -hmm. It is under the influence of Swarup Shakti, under the shelter or part of Swarup Shakti. Uh, what is the, the position? You have to read that book. <laughs> Inherent or inherited? Have you heard about that one? I even heard that you are reading it. Yeah. <laughs> which which, which chapter? <laughs> um, sixth. Sixth? Yeah. Have to go back a few chapters then. Yes, for sure. <laughs> <laughs> I'll read more attentively. Chapter, I think, chapter four. Mm -hmm. But yeah, basically the idea is that see that deha or, or the spiritual form we will uh, receive is it's composed of sort of shakti. That's the very definition of of sadhana bhakti by Sri Rupa Goswami, Kriti Sadhya Bhavit Sadhya Bhavasa Sadhana Vida Nitya Siddhasya Bhavasya Prakatya Mridi Sadhyata, which means sadhana bhakti is not producing bhava or prem, but is cleaning the chitta, cleaning the mind, if you will, to prepare it for the descent of Swarup Shakti in the form eventually of bhava, which bhava means also bhava deha or siddha deha. When we say siddha deha means Perfected body, but perfected body means a body made of bhava, body made of spiritual emotion, body made of sarup shakti. And of course, those bodies, it's not that there are, there are different ways that sometimes the Buddhists understand this. And I've heard the Buddhists speaking about that, like, and Jiva Goswami says something in the Priti Sandarbha that can be interpreted in different ways. So I'm just sharing my, my reading of that. But it's not, at least I will say, it's not that you have like these bodies like in a, like in a closet no? in, in, in Golok and all of these bodies are already hanging there, <laughs> just like waiting, yeah. uh, like, okay, like lying there <laughs> and have assigned names. Okay, and this is for Radhagiri Dhari and this is Guru Bhakya. Okay, it's the moment that choo, the body is found like, choo, you can like, okay, and now I have it. <laughs> Something like <laughs> But actually, I, we will we will say, of course, I, at the same time, it's not something that is created out of nothing. It's not that they were not existing and they start to exist because in our philosophy, we do not follow this notion that in Latin is called creatio ex nihilo, which means in Christianity, they follow it like creation out of, of nothing. No? There was nothing on the first day, whatever, water and earth was created and the human was created. So our idea is everything exists forever. But also everything has potential. No? Because we could say, I mean, there's a long complex topic, but it's an interesting one. Sometimes we all read things like there's no change in the absolute. Krishna doesn't undergo changes. There's no change in the spiritual world. But the point is, what's the meaning of that? Which type of change? Because at the same time, there is change. We hear constantly that every single day Krishna's beauty is increasing and the love of his devotees are, is increasing and his beauty is increasing in reply to that and their love is increasing. In, so there is change. There are new lilas every day. It's not that every day is, everything is the same because there is no change. Like every day they do the same, they speak the same. I mean, it's pretty boring. I don't want to go there. <laughs> so there are change. But not change in the sense that we experience them here, you not know, like birth, old age, you no, know, like all these type of changes that by effect by the influence of time. So when we hear there's no change in, in spirit in consciousness, this refers to that those type of change. But there are new lilas, new dynamics, basically. So so the point is that the Siddha Deha is in one sense is not created out of nothing. But it's part of the potential of the Swarup Shakti. And Swarup Shakti is there, but also every Shakti has a potential. As we have potential as Tatastha Shakti to accomplish something that is not in the here and now, <laughs> but it's in potential, it is there. What to speak of, if that happens with the Tatastha Shakti, what to speak of the Swarup Shakti? So there is potentiality and, and new waves, if you will, of Swarup Shakti will manifest with new lilas and with a new dynamics. So, in that sense, when when, <clears throat> when we are ready to become imbibed by the influence of Swarup Shakti, the corresponding Siddha Deha will manifest if 
I, I'm putting that somehow poetically, but it's, it's the reach of words, the limit of words. A new wave of Swarup Shakti will manifest in its own potential. That corresponding spiritual body will will manifest out of Swarup Shakti. So in that sense, yeah, those those, those bodies have very unique uh, potentialities and possibilities very different to the limitations of our present body. I, I know it's difficult to to conceive because you, we cannot avoid thinking about that and you start to think about your present body and it's not working. Your present body is getting old, gray hair, as you can see, and so many other stuff like that. And and when you speak about Sida Deha, it's nothing to do like that. But it's some point of reference. You know, that, yeah. Like Srila Prabhupada will say, you know, if when when our head collapses in trying to understand the things, he will say, why don't you go there and find it for yourself? Mm -hmm. There all the doubts will be resolved. When, when you are there and you actually have the realization of what's taking place, everything fits in place. Words and thoughts have their limitations. We try to use them as much as we can, but understanding their limits as well. Tarun, you have one question? I have a question. Yeah. Thank you for the beautiful class. <clears throat> I was wondering something. Uh, maybe you discussed it in the previous classes, but I'm not sure. I, I don't remember. No problem. So uh, it's, yeah, it's uh, interesting how Brahma is uh, the fourth living being and actually his intelligence is absolutely like, pure and he learned all the Vedas with his four heads. Mm -hmm. And uh, Krishna said he is the Vedanta Vedavid. Yeah, he is he's the he's also the conclusion of the Vedas. Ah. So if he understands the Vedas, he should know the conclusion of the Vedas. Mm. This is like one part. Mm. And the other part is like part of the Vedic knowledge is uh, understanding the descents of the different avatars, how, like, uh, in the manner of uh, Bhagavatam, how Bhagavatam is explaining that in different yugas, okay, maybe we're in Kali Yuga, Kauki Avatar hasn't come yet, but we know Kauki Avatar will come, it, uh, he has a um, specific features, his features are like this, mm -hmm. uh, his form is white, and, and, mm -hmm. He will be on, you know, horse and and how Brahma, how Brahma doesn't know, like the uh, the ascent of Krishna. Mm -hmm. so that's that's a bit interesting. Yeah, yeah, I get the point. Yeah, what we could say is that going to the first part of your question, interesting one, that <clears throat> yeah, Brahma is known for having studied. Vedas, not only once, but not only twice, not only thrice, but one with each head, if you will, <laughs> no, four times. So that's pretty comprehensive study. And despite that, somehow it seems that on one side we, he's known as having studied the Vedas comprehensively, and at the, at the same time as you quoted Bhagavad Gita 1515, Krishna is saying, Vedanta Krit Veda Vidibhacham. Krishna says, I am to be known as the, as the conclusion of the Vedic study. So it seems that Brahma didn't no. did his homework <laughs> properly or what happened there. No? <laughs> so, of course, different things can be said. Uh, I will say that the main point here is that. Uh, of course, Brahma met Krishna before before this Lila in particular, which is the one who really bewildered him. He met Krishna in the beginning of creation, as, as we know, being the, the first created being, if you will, in the cycle. So he met Krishna, but Krishna, we explained that yeah, in the, in, almost in the first class. <clears throat> Krishna, there appear in the different disposition to him. So he appeared in a more, let's say, formal way, like his guru exhibiting Gyan Mudra, no? which is pretty much like Ashvarya-like mode of de delivering knowledge and enlightening guru-disciple, 
So there was kind of a more, I mean, Krishna appeared as in Gopa Vish, dressed as a Gopa, interestingly. He didn't appear like for hands or anything. But at the same time, there was some formality in his exchange with Brahma. Although on some level also, they shook hands. And Brahma expressed, oh, I have some attraction for Sakya, for being a friend of yours. But on some level, mostly there, there was predominated by some formality as generally it happens between guru and disciple. It's not that the disciple will go to the guru, hey, how are you doing, my friend? No, it's like <laughs> there is some decorum there. So Brahma kind of had that picture of Krishna. And of course, he connected this, okay, study of the Vedas, Krishna, conclusion of the Vedas. And he connected, okay, yeah, Krishna is the conclusion of the Vedas, but there are different Krishnas, as we were saying before. <laughs> so the Vedas, speaking in the Vedas, not speaking necessarily about the Bhagavatam, but the Vedas in itself, they do not speak that much about Krishna. The conclusion of the Vedas, as we know, is the Vedanta, and the natural, more comprehensive explanation of Vedanta is the Srimad Bhagavatam. And then you find who Krishna is and what Krishna Prem is. <clears throat> so the idea is that Brahma mostly studied the four Vedas, where it, there's only a hint towards that reality. You know? Because the Vedas, as Krishna says in the Gita, to Arjuna, um, no, no, Trigunya Visaya Veda Nistrigunya of Arjuna. No, he's saying the Vedas mostly deal with the three gunas. No? Mostly deal with Karma Kanda, Jnana Kanda, some Upashana Kanda, but mostly are connected with Dharma Artha Kama. Some little Moksha, but Krishna and Vrindavan. Raja Lila, that go, goes way beyond even moksha. It's a post-liberated situation, which doesn't seem too much moksha-like. Again, it seems like it seems like me and my family in our holidays in the countryside. <laughs> if you see me externally, it doesn't seem like moksha, liberated people, yogis, four arms, something <laughs> overtly extraordinary. So again, Brahma had this idea, no? And Brahma is Bidhi, you know? Brahma is known as the perfect follower of every single Vedic rule. He's very much in, in that identify with, with this Karma Kanda section and doing everything, every ritual, the Paka very perfectly. You know? The scripture is saying if you want to be born as Brahma, because one can attain that post, you have to execute Barna Ashram perfectly without any single mistake for 100 lifetimes. So try to, I mean, generally, if you start to understand, we do not practice that nowadays because Barna Ashram is not part of nowadays society. But if you will just, okay, let's try to travel in time and try to apply this for one hour, you will break all the rules in record time. You know? So what to speak 100 lifetimes without one single mistake, you can be Brahma. So that speaks how much Brahma is like a very correct personality but who is mostly familiarized with that side of the Veda, which is mostly the main part of the Veda. So yeah, he has a glimpse of Krishna. He meets him in the beginning of creation, but still he has this more formal Aishwarya side of Krishna. And he has this main structure of the rules and how to do everything properly. And Vedas are mostly about Dharma, Artakam. And when he goes to Vrindavan, he, I mean, all rules are broken there, basically. As we said, Krishna is finding Brahma is finding Krishna with his friends sitting on the floor, eating with the hand, with the left hand, not the right hand, taking something, tasting things. Oh, wow, this is so good. You try and put it on the <laughs> mouth. And the friends put it out on the mouth of Krishna. No? Uh, for Brahma, this was like too much. I mean, his psychology collapsed because he's a follower of rules. And here, everyone was full, ro breaking all rules. Because Love makes its own rules, and that's love prevail, prevails in Brahma. So my point is it, that what made Brahma to really not understand what was taking place. And that's the point that it's made here is that Krishna Lila, in one sense, is beyond the reach of the Vedas. I mean, although I know that Prabhupada many times spoke about Vedic tradition, but technically speaking, and he said that many times, 
we are our proposal is beyond the reach of the Vedas. Krishna says that in the Gita again. Try Gunya Vishaya Veda Nishray Gunya Babarjuna. He's telling Turjuna. The Vedas mostly deal with the gunas, transcend the Vedas. That means Vedanta. Reach the end of the Veda. And then comes the Bhagavatam. Shrotam Api Upanishadam Duri Harikatambrita, says Mahaprabhu. The, 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 the most esoteric and metaphysical section of the Vedas are the Upanishads. And Mahaprabhu says, that place to where the Upanishads can take you, which in comparison to Dharma Artha Kama is a lot, Mahaprabhu says, where the Upanishads can take you is still very far from when Harikata can take you. Upanishad can take you to some reach, yeah? Brahman, non-dualism and transcendence, no illusion, but Harikata, Krishna Kata, Bhagavad Kata, oh, that's that what Visargo Janataga people, that's another creation altogether. So that's even beyond the reach of the Vedas. I mean, you go to the Braj, nobody's quoting the Vedas. Nobody knows any single verse from the scripture. <laughs> but they personify the conclusion of that. Because the Vedas and the Upanishads say Krishna is God. Now you go to Brindavan and try to say that, try to sell that to, 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 one, to one, any, any Brajavasi. <laughs> Uda would try that. It didn't work. He tried hard. He knows he's, he knows very well the Shastra. He was Shastra bit. Uda knew the Vedas from head to toe, tip to toe. And he went to Brindavan and tried to deliver this message to Nanda, Jashoda, Gopa. <laughs> Oh, you are so fortunate. You have such a love for Krishna, who is God. And <laughs> he, he, he was not successful. He didn't sell any book in Brindavan. <laughs> <laughs> Nobody believed him. They were, all of them thought, you are crazy. You have this reputation of being a great sage, but now you're coming here and telling us that Krishna is God. That makes no sense for us. We have direct experience that that's not the case. <laughs> So the point is, <laughs> the Vedas, the Upanishads are described as trying to attain Krishna. You have in the Bhagavad and the prayers of the personified Vedas and so on. <laughs> so the Vedas are trying to, to attain Krishna. They didn't, but they say Krishna is God. And on another side, you have Yashoda who says Krishna is not God, and she has attained Krishna. She has Krishna trapped on her lap. Is totally trapped by, by the rope of her affection. So the conclusion is who is more correct of the two? <laughs> of course, we are not denying that Krishna is God, but in the ultimate realization, the Brajavasi's version is for us the ultimate Brahman. And they will, of course, the Bhagavatam is saying Krishna is too Bhagavan Swayam, Krishna is the supreme personality of Godhead. But if you understand that properly, at some point you will start shifting and thinking in another way. You will stop seeing Krishna as Supreme Personality of God. You will start to feel attracted to see him like a whatever, the lover of Radha, the friend of Sri Dham, Subal, and uh, the idea of God goes somewhere else. <laughs> so so yeah, that, that in, in connection to, to Brahma. And again, regarding the second part where, where, where Shastra is describing in advance the different descents, every age or each age, and yeah, this one in Kali Yuga, this one in Dwapara Yuga, and we could say, okay, Brahma was aware that in Dwapara Yuga, Krishna is coming. Yeah, of course. I mean, remember that before before Krishna was born, I mean, Brahma went with all the devas and tried to pray to Bhagavan, please come. <laughs> it's time. I mean, he knew, it's, he even knew he was the one instrumental in it's time for you to come and perform your function. Paritranaya sadhunam binashya chadusvitan dharma samsta paranartaya sambhavami juge So he knew, again, he knew, but he has his idea of, okay, who Krishna is, what the avatar is, how the avatar performs his function of chastising the demons, establishing dharma, but not having a picnic, eating with left hand and full informal. That's that's weird. That was Brahma was thinking. <laughs> so that went beyond his head, basically. I mean, he had this knowledge, Krishna, 
I mean, he met Krishna in the beginning of creation. He was his guru, his father, his mother. He's everything in one sense. He, they, he was instructed by Krishna, received the Chatur Shloki Bhagavatam, received Gayatri, so many things. And he practiced, he, he inter, internalized all that through sadhana, through so much time. He asked for Sakya. The time came for that. And Brahma didn't pass the test in one sense, but at the same time, He's passing the test, mm -hmm. no, as we can see. So it was just a small, like, sleeping there. No? <laughs> but yeah, for a moment, he was, like, overwhelmed because, again, Vrindavan can be... The, and that's a very important point of the Bhagavad. And this highest reality of Vrindavan, the most confidential secret of the Veda, and even if you have everything in place, you are a Brahma, you know all the Vedas, you know who will come as the, as the Yuga Avatar, you are calling him to come, when he got like a trailer of Prajalila in Sakyarasa, it was beyond his head. It was too much. He was, and he was trying to prepare himself for that. But in the moment of the dark experience, he he was overwhelmed by that for a moment, and did what he did. And of course, we are now being blessed by the consequences of that. <laughs> so we could say that yeah, he knew on some level, but still, Krishna Lila can be. Pretty astonishing. And the end of, of, the, of his prayers, he's saying, Ho Bhagyam, Ho Bhagyam. He started like to speak like in ecstasy, in how wonderful, how burned, how how fortunate, how fortunate are these Brajavasis who relate to you as friends, although you are the supreme absolute non-dual reality, they treat you as an equal, like a friend. What's their fortune? Who they are? And Brahma still has this Ajvara Gyan. He's aware you are God. But at the same time, he's attracted to how they are treating you in Vrindavan. This is like never seen before. So this is the main point of the Bhagavad, and like this psychology of Braj, that's very unique. You, you cannot find it anywhere else, anywhere else. So, so if we if we want that, we have to also prepare ourselves. That's the point. <laughs> if we don't want to end up being bewildered and mistaken the whole Brajalila and trying to make some kidnapping and interrupting picnic. We don't want to interrupt Krishna's picnic. <laughs> we want to support that from one role or another. So, <laughs> Anyhow, some thoughts. I hope that helps. What? You have a question? Sadhguru? No. Mm. Oh, okay. So, I don't know. Something else before finishing? We are almost in time, but there is something else. Yeah. Sorry for taking time. No, please. Mm. Uh, you just mentioned the previous question. <clears throat> uh, uh, rather, Giridhar's question that um, Baba Deha is coming. Mm. Like, and uh, I was thinking of uh, that it, it's explained how we don't go directly uh, by Kunta. First, Sadaka take birth in Rokul. Mm. So does it mean that this Pavadeha comes at, at that point? Mm. Or it comes in in the Sadaka, when, in this life when the Sadaka is, is, mm. is reaching Bhava? Mm. And that, is it like when you take like this bird, so-called bird in Goku? That this is this is the um, this body that you have this deha. It, it means that this this is the one that you continue with in the uh, spiritual. Um, mm, mm, mm. Yeah, spiritual. yeah. We spoke about that recently, but I think it was a Q and A in Spanish. I don't I don't remember which language it was. So, uh, but that that topic is pretty much treated in detail by Vishwanath Chakravarta Thakur in his Raghavarma Chandrika at the end. Uh, and basically he makes this point that uh, we can in this lifetime reach certain, of course, when I say this lifetime can be, lifetime. yeah, exactly. <laughs> no, it's not that we have to take for granted, okay, in this lifetime I'll get my Baba Deha, I mean, can happen, but generally it takes some time. Most of our acharyas will mention 
may take a few lifetimes, which is nothing in comparison to what will come and, and the journey we have been coming from two, three lifetimes. It's like to receive such a gift is like we should be embarrassed to be in paying so little actually. So, but it is mentioned that whenever lifetime you attain bhava, whatever, whenever that may happen, <laughs> and on top of that prem, which is of course the bhava is considered like a ray of the sun of prem, prema suryamsu, is described by Rupa Goswami. Bhava is a ray of the sun of prem. Mm -hmm. So let's say in this lifetime someone eventually attains prem, or in some lifetime. Nonetheless, Prem, although it may sound like it, the topmost highest thing, to speak about Prem as the highest goal of life is still something generic. <laughs> At least for us Gaudias, Prem is, yeah, Prem, but which type of Prem? There are developments of Prem. So the, especially in regarding the developments of Prem, the idea is that there are so much, so intense, that for you to tolerate and deal with them, you need to receive very specific bhakti samskars right from birth to deal with them. So that's why this prescription is given of being born in the Prakat Lila, in the Bhoma Lila, in Gokul, whenever Krishna, when in, in, in whatever in whatever planet Earth, in whatever Vrindavan and planet Earth where Krishna is executing his Lila, that's happening always in some planet Earth, in some universe. So that Premi Bhakta will be born there from the womb of the Gopika, Nitya Siddha Gopi. And from the womb, it will start to receive Bhakti Samskars from eternal associates of Bhagavan. <laughs> and with that foundation, one will be able to go through the different developments of Prem, Sneha, Mam, Pranaya, Raga, Nurag, Bhav, Mahabhav, depending which is one's affinity, there will be a certain level of reach of Prem. So, and in that particular body uh, that we will consider, yeah, Bhava Deha, uh, one will eventually enter into the Golok, if you will, the Aprakat Lila, in the words of Jiva Goswami. So, so Vishwanath Chakravarti Thakur is describing that one is born in that body on earth where Krishna is performing his Lila. His, that person is already born with Prem. No? So you are already from the womb, you already have Prem, but still you have to distill, distill mm -hmm. that essence of Prem into other developments that are so ecstatic and emotional intense that you need certain particular form to tolerate that intensity <laughs> and you need for that to receive bhakti samskar from the womb to create that particular framework to incorporate that in a way that is organic natural and you will be developing those in that lifetime especially through separation why because in the earthly lila there is a point on the lila as we know the Christian lives Vrindavan, lives. He never lives, but in some form he lives, as we know. There is a manifest and one... Ex so through the separation that happens in the earthly lila, that separation, experience of separation in particular is the one who helps to, to create the final, if you will, development, stirring, churning of the heart <laughs> to reach that maturity no, that consummation of, 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 of the love that then will take one to go log to the Nitya Lila and will play out in the daily Lila with Krishna in the log. So, yeah, that's basically what our Acharyas. That's mostly a contribution by Bhishmana Chakravarti Thakur. The Goswamis do not speak too much about that. Rupa Goswami gives only one example in Bhaktira Samrita Sindhu about someone with Batsalya Bha being born in, on earth and entering perfection through Brahma Vimohan Lila <laughs> on earth. Interesting. But Vishwanath Chakvarta really develops that. So, so yeah, that, that's the idea. No? And also some interesting idea, just to complicate things more, <laughs> is that we have the parallel project prospect possibility of being born of, of, of eternally serving Mahaprabhu in, in, in Nietzsche and Avadu. And which will be that form? Well, if in this, in this lifetime you attain Prem, 
or in whatever lifetime you attain prem, as a sadhak, as a practitioner, that form is the one in which you will be serving uh, Mahaprabhu in, in Gaur Lila as a young Brahmin. That's why we keep the pictures of our, of our parampara in the altar, no? because the altar represents like a, a window into eternity. So the, their pictures there mean they are serving there. Of course, they will be younger than in the picture. Uh, once it came to me, the idea, it would be nice to have pictures of them when they were like 12, 13 years, because that's the age you will have in the Nitya now, is it? But it may be difficult. <laughs> But anyhow, that's another layer of, of possibility in connection to the, to the Gaur Lila. Yeah. Okay, so I think we can finish here. And for those who will like tomorrow, we have tomorrow and the day after tomorrow, we'll have two classes, yes. morning lecture and mm -hmm. evening. So tomorrow morning we have? 8.30 in the morning. Yeah, what? Q&A or Brahma Stuti, Brahma which Stuti. is the order? Mm -hmm. I think it's Q&A in the morning mm -hmm. and Brahma Stuti in the evening. On Sunday is Brahma Stuti in the evening, uh, in the morning, morning. sorry, and Q&A in Q &A the evening. In, uh -huh. Yeah, yeah. So in the morning, 8.30, <laughs> and in the evening, 6.30 tomorrow, and on Sunday, 8.30 in the morning, and 5 p.m. on Tarun's Juga Shala. Okay. So, Sri La Gurudev Ki Jai, Sri Man Mahaprabhu Ki Jai, Sri Giridach Maharaj Ki Jai, Sri Sri Jagannath Valadev Subhadri Ki Jai, Sri Arinam Sankirtan Ki Jai, Grantara Sri Man Bhagavatam Ki Jai, Sri Brahma Stuti Ki Jai, Gaur Bhakta Bind Ki Jai, Gaur Praman Haribo, Vanchakal Pataru Vyasha Kripasan Rupya Iva Chapati Tanam Pavane Pyo Vaishnavya Pyo Anantakoti Vaishnavrindaki Jai Gaur Hari Hari